welcome to my chat time. Today I have a couple of little announcements and then a few uh, art hacks I really like to use. So I will start with my um, offer to send happy mail to my faithful viewers. Uh, I just want to explain that when I talked about it in the video, I said uh, maybe I sent once a month, but when I was thinking about it and after I received such a nice response, I thought, well, this is going to take me a couple of years before everybody gets something. So I'm going to speed it up a little bit. So this last month, I sent eight happy mails out. And I know some of the um, viewers who live in the States already received them. Some of you who are overseas, hopefully get them soon. So I will speed up the process a little bit. One reason is too that I have a really good idea for next year I want to do. So I want to wrap this up maybe by the end of the year. But if you have not seen the video where I explain about how it works with the Happy Mail for my regular faithful viewers, then please check it out. I will put it up there in the iCard. All right, the second thing is that I am getting so many friend requests on my Facebook. And I'm so happy that people want to stay in touch and I want to stay in touch too. But just to explain, my Facebook uh, is very small. I think I have about 35 or maybe 37 by now people on it. And it's mainly family, very close friends. And so I like to keep it small. But I have a Facebook page and it's called Ina's Art Room. And if you like that, you know, you go in and you push the like button, you will stay in touch and I will answer your messages. I will answer any comments you might put under my postings. I usually post the videos who go up or anything else uh, which is happening in my art world. Um, that would be a much better way to stay in touch. So please, if I don't answer your friend request, um, don't forget about me. Just <laughs> stay in touch through my Facebook page called Ina's Art Room. It's also up on the top of my YouTube channel. There's a little icon at the right hand side and it says Ina's Art Room and you can use that to get there as well. All right, that was the announcement. So that's out of the way. Um, then I wanted to show you a couple little uh, craft hacks I like to use. Now, some of them been around. I just adapted them. I think one or two are maybe my own. I don't know. Maybe somebody else thought about it too. Okay, one thing is um, ink pads. I use a lot of ink pads and you've seen me use it not just, um, you know, by inking my stamps, but I use them also with my cloth. And the reason for that is when I first started doing mixed media, I didn't have a whole lot of fancy equipment. So when I watched... Um, you know, other artists use dabbers and stuff like that. I thought, well, what can I use? It's my work. And so, well, two fingers and a cloth. And I use it a lot. And you see me use it. And it really gives you a lot of control over what you're doing, especially if you have some texture underneath it. It also works uh, with stencils. And um, I really like it. I think... It's a very um, easy and very precise ways to make shading or if you want to use your stencil. All right, but sometimes, especially with the dark colors, it does come through sometimes and you get dirty hands. So um, then I thought, what else could I use? Now I've seen my friend Shemi doing these little cords with a piece of this, um, what do you call it? Makeup sponges. And you just put an elastic around it. Of course, now I don't have one here to show you. Anyway, you get the idea. And it works. It works really well. But this is quite thin. And it's also made out of different materials than these little wedges, which you can get everywhere. This is much denser. Denser? Denser. And stronger. So I find that this way out really quick, especially if you use some over stencil where you might go back and forth, it gets caught there. It, uh, you know, kind of disintegrates after a while. So I was using them this way. And of course you can. But what you get, you get these sharp edges. Which sometimes you just don't want those sharp edges. So one thing I thought about, I fold them like this. And I used to do it like this with my hand because I find the round edge works much better. But again, you get a lot on your fingers. So to avoid this, I'm using one of these, I don't know what you call them. 
They're not paper clips, but you know what they are. I, I don't really know the proper word for it. Now, when you use this, you still get a little rim, but much less. But also you have the possibility of going in circles like you would um, with a dauber. And yeah, it works quite well. So you might want to give that a try. Now, I think this was my idea. I think so. Maybe somebody else thought about it before me. Anyway, so this is this. Again, also when you do stenciling, many people say, how do you get a real precise image? It always seems to leak under. I think the key to that is, first of all, take a hard bristle brush. I like these little, they're real cheap. I buy them in my local craft store. And um, you need a piece of tissue paper. I mean, you could also use uh, an extra piece of paper you might want to just use as a drop cloth. So let's say we pick a butterfly here. Okay, load your brush, you don't need much, and you need to dab pretty much all of it off until it feels more like a dry brush. Sorry, this makes a little noise. Usually I take this noise out when you see me working. Yeah, because working on this kind of stuff sometimes can be a little noisy. And you can go back in here and pick up a little more. You just do not want to have a lot of paint on your brush. You want to get really precise. Make, you make sure you cover it well. Give it a second. And I usually like to go one more time. So you make sure you get all in the little crevices. And if you take a little time, if you want it real precise. Now, I agree that sometimes when you use background stencils, they don't have to be so precise. I think my paint I picked here is not very opaque, but I'm hoping this will look good now. All right, so the, you got a pretty crisp little image. So just make sure you dab off most of the paint. Otherwise, yeah, it will seep under your um, stencil. So I hope that was helpful. Let's see, what else did we have? Oh, another thing was that I often use my credit card for, you know, doing grasses or decoration, embellishment. <laughs> I really like it. You can use just one color, like I do here, just for demonstration purposes. But of course, you can add two, three colors. And you know, it makes nice little plants. Oops, that was a little too much. But that's even okay. It doesn't really matter that much. And you can, of course, cut your credit card too, where you have a smaller piece. And you have a little more control that way when you're going. Now, I also use it sometimes for the sides to just give the impression of a boundary like this. Okay, so credit cards are really a lot of fun. I really like it. So that was a lot of color there. But, you know, as you see, it doesn't really matter, depending what kind of a page you're working on. Okay, that was my credit card I like to use. Now, I've seen many other artists use it, too. So that wasn't anything so new. And I think there was one more thing. All right, so let's put this aside. Another thing I started doing when I make journals um, is using fabric on the inside cover. Now, of course, it depends completely what type of journal you try to make. Uh, but most of the time, when you use paper, you have to do it in uh, two sections, one in the front here, you do one in the back, and then you have to do something with the spine, depending on what it looks like. Because the paper will not go all the way from here across to there. It will just crumble up in here and won't good, look good. But the fabric will. The fabric is very moldable. I like the looks of it, especially if you rip it and you get a little bit of a frayed edge. I did it in here too. And it's so easy to work with. And it's really stuck. It's tight. You can still uh, make pockets on it. You can still uh, add paper embellishments. But it's just one piece. Go all the way from there to there. I like the feel, the looks of it. It really keeps the spine and everything well aligned too. So this is something I really like doing and want to do more. Okay. 
And I think that is it for today. Just a couple little tips. So I hope you enjoyed the few little craft hacks I use. And maybe uh, they will make your crafting easier as well. Uh, thank you for watching and listening to me rambling on and on. <laughs> thank you so much. Bye-bye for now.